everybody. Uh, so people come to New York from all over the world. I think one of the reasons people come here is to eat. Yeah. <laughs> so today we're going to be in Greenwich Village, which is, I think, my favorite food neighborhood. It's my favorite too. <laughs> so Lori and I both do food tours in Greenwich Village regularly. Some of the places we're going to show you are on our regular food tours. Some of them are just places that we like. Uh, and just so you know, we're going to be focusing on places that are takeout places only. There are a ton of great sit down places in Greenwich Village. That's just not what we're focusing on today. Um, but let's go ahead and get some food. So one of the places we're gonna stop first is McDougal Street. When in doubt, if you're looking for food in New York City, you cannot go wrong with McDougal Street. I think pretty much this entire stretch is all food. This is a great place to get, especially like cheap takeout options. One of the reasons there's so many choices on this street is we are right near New York University. So this is definitely a go-to spot for a lot of the university students in the area. Some really great late night places as well. A lot of the places on this street are open until four or five o'clock in the morning. First stop is here at Mamoon's Falafel on McDougal Street. It's one of our favorite stops. Now, Mamoon's came to the United States in 1971. They're the first falafel restaurant in New York and one of the first Middle Eastern restaurants in the United States. And we got a side of the falafel. Two sides of falafel. <laughs> two sides. Because you can never have too much falafel. Yes. Honestly. <laughs> um, so this place has been here since 1971. Um, I always get the falafel. It is my go-to. I think it's what a lot of people get. I mean, the place is called Mamoon's Falafel, um, but you can get more than just falafel here. They have shawarma, they have kebab, they you can get hummus, you can get grape leaves. Um, so there are a lot of options here. Um, you can get falafel not just done as a side. This is just the falafel themselves, but you can get them in a pita with lettuce, tomato, sauce, or you can get them as a platter. Same with their shawarma and their kebabs and things like that. So. Um, just in case anybody out there does not know exactly what is in falafel, um, it's chickpeas. That's really mostly it. Chickpeas, garlic, parsley. Theirs has a lot of parsley in it. Um, you'll actually see when you break it open, super green on the inside. Yeah, that's the parsley. Um, that's the parsley. That's primarily what it is. So, um, and so this is made into a little ball that looks like this, um, and then these are deep fried. Yeah. Now, so, a lot of cultures have falafel. Well, we get a lot of Israelis yeah. on our tours, and they say, yeah, we've got falafel there too. Um, it actually started in Egypt yeah. uh, with fava beans, but they use chickpeas at yes. this place. Yeah. Um, and so you can find falafel all over New York City. You can find falafel all over different parts of the That's Middle the East. Best. This is my favorite falafel ever. Yeah. <laughs> I have definitely bought 10 sides of falafel yep. just for myself and brought them home and ate them. They have, they have a, this is their first store, but they have one in the East Village. They have one in Hoboken, New Jersey. I, I gotta eat them right now. Yeah. Oh, we gotta tell them the sauce though. I couldn't wait. All right, All right so while she eats, this is their hot sauce. It is quite hot. Uh, they do sell it by the bottle. Um, Elijah bought one, my nephew's in town. Uh, I think so it was good. $6 for a bottle now. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. It, it is spicy, but it, it's got a really good flavor. It's yeah. not just like steer your mouth off spicy. Now this is the tahini sauce. This is one of the most, I think, frequent things that's served with falafel. Um, so tahini just is sesame seed paste uh, is the base of it. So this is super, super mild. One of the best things to do is actually Mix take them. a dip of tahini and then a dip of hot. Mm -hmm. Get a little bit of that creamy and then heat and you will have the best falafel ever. Oh, uh, something else that's great about them. They are cash only. There is an ATM next door, but their drinks are really cheap. They are. Yeah, they're like a dollar. One of the best deals actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the important thing to know, if you are a night owl, and you're gonna be doing any late nights, especially down here in this neighborhood, Mamoon's is open till five o'clock in the morning. I've had many happy late nights at Mamoon's Falafel. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and so, they open 11 a.m. Yeah. So definitely a must try if you are here in New York and you make your way down to Greenwich Village. All right, so this beautiful thing that I'm holding is Artichoke Pizza. We're at Artichoke Pizza here, also on McDougal Street, same street as Mamoon's. Um, Artichoke Pizza actually has several locations all over the city. This is the one we come to and bring guests to on our Greenwich Village food tour. So this is what they are known for, their artichoke slice. As you can see, it is absolutely giant. Um, we have this one cut into thirds and it's still kind of a lot of pizza. Um, so this is, like the least traditional New York pizza you could have. Um, New York pizza is usually a really thin crust, usually has a red sauce, mozzarella. Um, so this is, first of all, you can see to the side, a really, really thick crust. Um, and rather than a tomato-based sauce, this is a cream-based sauce. It has artichoke, it has spinach, uh, and actually beyond that, I don't know what's in it. This is a family recipe. This place was started by two cousins. Uh, and this is a secret family recipe, so I have no idea what's in it. Lori has no idea what's in it. We just know that it is absolutely delicious. All right, so we have split this into threes, which you can see is still a pretty good size yeah, piece of pizza. This is one third. Uh, the, our cameraman is going we're, to... We're paying him in pizza. <laughs> uh, um, no, this is actually, this is a great sharing spot, especially if you're going to be going around the village trying to like, try yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. I highly recommend a share here. Um, we're about to dive into this magic. Mm -hmm. um, it is pretty... Oh, I am. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty fantastic. It's almost like eating a quiche yeah. in a way. Like the, the, kind of. that. Yeah, or honestly, if you've ever had like an artichoke spinach dip yeah. as like an appetizer, mm -hmm. if you think about like that on top of a really thick piece of flatbread, more like that than like a regular pizza or probably like any pizza you've had before. Um, the crust is very crisp. It is, very, very crispy crisp. on the bottom. And a little bit buttery. There's like a buttery flavor to it. There's definitely, and I'm always game for any buttery flavor in anything. Um, and the sauce, um, this this great family recipe, has a really incredible, like, really well-developed flavor. Again, we really don't know what's in it. I have heard it has over 20 ingredients in it, though, and that absolutely makes sense to me. You can kind of taste it as a really nice, deep flavor. As a heads up, this is not vegetarian. No, it's not vegetarian. There is some kind of chicken stock or something in it yeah. <laughs> i just ruined that for you didn't i um, <laughs> a little bit <laughs> um, um so yes if you are there are a couple places actually on this tour where if you are strictly vegetarian you would not want to partake mamoons however totally oh, fine vegetarian on. actually mm -hmm. vegan mm -hmm. yeah um, they do have other pizzas inside pepperoni mm -hmm. margarita uh, crab meat vodka sicilian Mm -hmm. I love that one. Crab meat with lobster sauce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they do have some others. This, of course, is what most people actually get when they're at Artichoke Pizza. And much like Mamun's down the street, also open until like four in the morning. Four or in the morning. Yep. So another really good late night spot. It's very quiet at this time of day. Yeah. A <laughs> uh, little later on at night, not so quiet. Yeah. We're at Pomfrit, the Belgium prize place right across the street from Mamoun's Falafel on McDougal Street. Yes. So this is not its original home. It actually used to be over in the East Village, was the original location. Uh, and sadly, it was next to a building that had a massive gas explosion. Uh, and the, the place was destroyed, but they moved here and we were happy to get, have them back. Um, so this is what you can get at Pomfrit. Um, so this is a specialty shop. That's really what they make here. Um, this doesn't have an extensive menu. <laughs> this is what you can get. 
this is, believe it or not, a regular size at Palm Frites. So when you go in, don't be fooled. They show you the size of paper cones flattened out and they look really small. They're <laughs> yeah. not really small. Despite what you might think, you don't need an extra large. I'm telling you this from experience. <laughs> so, so these are Belgium fries. They use American potatoes for these. And you could see how they're cut. Nice and, and thick. They double fry them. So the first fry is to cook it through. The second fry is to make the exterior crispy. Right? They use vegetable oil, which is not traditional Belgium right. fry oil. Uh, they use uh, animal fat in Belgium. Um, so they use vegetable oil here. So if you're a vegetarian or vegan, this is great These too. They're actually vegetarian. Okay. Unlike artichoke pizza, apparently. So um, <laughs> I don't know if you can. Yeah, you can't see um, it. So but you can't see it, but there is, um, we said there's not an extensive menu, and that is true for the actual food items, but that is not true for the sauces. Yeah. <laughs> they have a massive list of sauces. Um, so they were nice enough here to give us they have a sampler platter of sauces. There are about 40 different sauces you could try, though. Um, so they gave us this lovely sampler platter, and so what we have here is the mango. Um, this is the Vietnamese pineapple. Mm -hmm. This is um, the Parmesan. This is the Parmesan peppercorn. This is rosemary, and then that's roasted garlic, and that's black truffle, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And even though they were so kind and gave us this lovely plate of sauces, I couldn't resist and get my own favorite on the side. This is Bordeaux wine, fig, and sage, and it is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> they do have some. Uh, uh, dipping sauces that are not mayo based but this is a european mayo not an american mayo which has a bit of a sweeter flavor to it it tastes different than american mayo um they have ketchup they have mustard they have malt vinegar yeah. so if you're if you really don't want to do the mayo they do have other they have options other in stuff. yeah and they do have sauces that are not mayo based and so most of the specialty sauces you do pay for yeah at pom frites but um you can there are a few sauces you can get for free yes. and and again if they're feeling generous they might give you a little a little sampler platter like this one yeah. <laughs> all right so let's dive in here okay so i'm gonna go black truffle because it sounds amazing and i'll do vietnamese oh, pineapple because i love this that one. is crazy <laughs> that it really is it is like the, a really intense black truffle flavor so if you love truffle Go for it. If you do not love truffle, don't get this because it's really strong. You could taste the pineapple. Mm -hmm. You could taste cilantro. Interesting. What's like Vietnamese that. pineapple? I love that. All right, I got to go for another one. What should I do? I think I'm going to go uh, rosemary. I'm curious. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's very <laughs> rosemary. Um, that is a really strong rosemary flavor. It's really nice. It tastes like really fresh. Um, so that's really, really tasty. Um, so again, if you love rosemary, go for it. It's not, so I'm getting the impression any of the, the single flavor sauces, if it's black truffle or it's rosemary, they're really strong flavors. Mm -hmm. So make sure it, it is a flavor you really do enjoy. Um, I know also here, if you've never tried a sauce before, they're really nice about like letting you try mm -hmm. a little bit first before yeah, you commit to ordering you know, a tub this size. <laughs> And they'll also let you sample the fries. They will. Mm -hmm. So they're really good about that. So don't be shy. If you call, make sure you ask if you are really not sure and you want to try something. I think this is their that. only location. So you do have to come to Greenwich Village, to McDougal, to try them here. What am I going to go for? I'm going to go garlic. I'm going to go garlic. Yeah, that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Really, really all right, we're going to finish this off. Yes. All right. So if you're enjoying the tour so far, go ahead and hit the like button and help others discover the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel. We have walked across the Brooklyn Bridge through Harlem, Central Park, and more. We also have virtual tours and channels that focus on Washington, D.C., New Orleans, London, and more. Look for free tours by foot wherever you travel. Now, back to the tour. All right, so we have moved over to Bleecker Street. We are no longer on McDougal. We have a lot of places to do on Bleecker Street. It's another really great food street. Uh, so this is a favorite spot on our Greenwich Village food tour, and this is Fayico's. Okay. 
Faico's Italian Specialties, or as we call it, Faico's Pork Store, opened in 1900. It's been family operated. Yeah. It is a local meat store. So if you live in the neighborhood, this is where people buy their meat. But they have other things that are very delicious, like this. <laughs> These are called arancini. Arancini in Italian means little orange, yes. right? But they're rice balls. So if you go buy rice balls, if you say, do you have a rice ball? They'll know what they'll, you mean. They'll know what you mean. Yeah, or if you call it arancini, they'll, they'll know. Okay. Uh, these cost a dollar. Yeah, best yeah. deal in the a neighborhood, dollar. honestly. A dollar Usually piece. like a quick snack if you're walking around yeah. this neighborhood. You can go in. This is not a special thing we get on the tour. You can just go in and get one of these if you want. Um, they are absolutely delicious. They are warm. Um, and so if you haven't had this before, it's risotto. Uh, on the inside, it, there's risotto, there's cheese, there's herbs, mm -hmm. um, and then it does have kind of a fine coating of breadcrumbs on the outside. So this is not gluten free, even though the base of it is risotto. Right. Um, there is some gluten in it. Um, they are absolutely fantastic. Yes. Yeah. One of my favorite things in the neighborhood. Um, so we'll go ahead and crack one open so you can see. Yeah, look at all the cheese. <laughs> um, so, uh, so that's what it looks like on the inside. You can see it is very cheesy. You can see the little bits uh, of green in there, and that's from the herbs. Um, but these are really wonderful. Definitely always, I think, a favorite on yeah. the tour of guests. Um, and so even though Arancini comes from little orange, no orange involved. Um, yeah. Now, growing up here, I've had plenty of arancini. I mean, there's I grew up in every, you know, Italians were everywhere. You can get Italian food anywhere. Um, these are definitely cheesier than arancini mm -hmm. I've had. Um, they tend to be a little uh, drier. Maybe it have like a pocket of meat or peas in the middle, mm -hmm. and then you pour a red sauce over it. Uh, they will give you red sauce here yeah. if you want, but it really doesn't need it. I think it kind of takes away from the cheese. I don't think it needs it at all. Yeah. Usually when I have these other places, I want sauce. Yeah. Um, yep. I don't think this needs it at all. If you are more into the meats and things like that, something else to know about Faico's is they do have a sandwich counter in the back as well. Mm -hmm. You can get all kinds of great Italian specialty sandwiches. Um, and I think it's a little hidden gem in the neighborhood, honestly, as yeah. far as a place to get a sandwich. Because you go in and it looks like a, a retail market. And it yeah. is mostly. It, it's meats and they have some canned goods and some things like that. But they have amazing sandwiches here. Also, you can get a lot of different like Italian specialty sodas as well. Yeah. This here is called the Manhattan Special. It is a coffee soda. Not my thing, but people love it. <laughs> I got the diet. Um, I find the diet tastes pretty, like it doesn't really taste that, that aspartame mm -hmm. taste or anything. Um, it tastes pretty close to the original, so I, I get the diet, but this is coffee flavored soda. Well, Yummy. I've been sitting here chowing down on this, but uh, yeah. Lori, dig in. Yeah, <laughs> I will do that. All right, we are at the corner of 7th Avenue and Bleecker Street. We're at Bleecker Street Pizza. Um, so Greenwich Village is kind of a pizza neighborhood. There's a yeah. lot of really famous pizzerias in this area. Um, there's John's on Bleecker, um, which Joe's. is Joe's. Um, but of all of the pizza places in Greenwich Village, I have to say this one is my favorite. It's my favorite <laughs> in the whole city, actually. Yeah. Um, I, I dream about this pizza constantly. <laughs> um, so Bleecker Street Pizza has a lot of different pies. But if you come here, this is the absolute must try. So this is the Nona Maria pizza. It is the original owner's grandmother's pizza recipe. Yeah. She brought from Italy. She yes. would make it every week yeah. for the family, for the kids. And uh, the owner was actually a police officer in New York City. And when he retired, he opened up pizzeria so he can sell his grandmother's recipe. And uh, it's gone well. They have been voted best pizza in New York several times in a row. You can actually see right behind Lori's head here. It's rated as the number two pizzeria. Um, and so it, this is a really, really popular place. So the Nona Maria pizza, what makes it special, what makes it unique, um, I think the best thing about it is the sauce. Yes. Uh, this, is, yeah. this is a fantastic sauce. This is not your regular out of the jar pizza sauce. Um, you can actually see it's got like nice big chunks of tomato in it. It has a really great, bright, fresh tomato flavor. Um, all of that on there. A lot of people think it's spinach. It's not spinach. That's actually basil. So fresh it's a basil. huge amount of fresh basil on there. Also on the bottom. Yes. 
they use a bed breadcrumbs instead of semolina. Yeah. yeah so yeah. and that gives this really great like, crunchy, crunchy texture on the bottom. And the Parmesan is Reggiano Parmesan. So yes, they Which, order it from Italy. Yep. Um, and it gets sent over in giant wheels. It's like over a thousand dollars for a yeah. wheel of this cheese, yeah. and it gets grated onto the finish. Actually, I think of all of the pizzas here, not just this one. Um, they all have a little bit of this. So it's really top quality ingredients, and they're absolutely fantastic. Yes. So I think it's time. I think it's that time. I touched your slice. <laughs> <laughs> <So excited>. ah. <laughs> So we cut this into threes because we're feeding our cameraman today. We're paying him the pizza. Every time I have it, I'm like, yeah, that's just as good as last time. <laughs> it's so delicious. Um, I think what I really, really like about it, one of the things I really like about it, besides how crispy the bottom is, um, the sauce is really, really flavorful. It's not a super sweet tomato sauce, which yeah. I think some pizza sauces tend towards being kind of sweet. This is not. You well, just taste the, the freshness, the tomato. Yeah, and, and and this is like an actual marinara that they put mm -hmm. on here. That's grandma's marinara. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is just, this is the must try, I think. My suggestion, come here day one of your trip, so this way you can come on day two, day three, day yeah. four. Don't discover this on your last day because no, I hear so that all the sad. time. Yep. <laughs> and I will say, I we bring people here on food tours. Mm -hmm. This is always a favorite stop. Um, this is always one that I hear from people. Like they'll text me later or they email me later. Oh, we went back. We went back and we got a slice or we got a whole pie. <laughs> so this is definitely a favorite. You you will know exactly what we mean as soon as you take a bite. <laughs> All right, we have moved on to the good stuff. We are moving on to desserts, my favorite part. Um, so we are now up on West 4th Street. Uh, little tiny place, but an absolute must try, I think, if you're here in this neighborhood. This is Barsano's, and they make chocolates. They make them handmade right here in the store. Mm -hmm. Can you get that in there? Oh, yeah. So we got quite a few to sample. Yeah, uh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, we went a little, a little crazy. Um, so one of the best things here, my absolute favorite, the thing I cannot walk out of this store without getting is a sea, sea salt caramel. They do have milk chocolate and dark chocolate. I'm a dark chocolate girl. Yeah. Um, but I was particularly interested today cause I walked in and he was like, I just made these. So there's not that many places left that still hand make the chocolates in the store. Um, not many places where you can go in and get a very freshly made yeah. <laughs> sea salt caramel. Oh yeah. That's, that's the good stuff right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's perfect. And they have a whole display case full of truffles. This one is the raspberry truffle in dark chocolate. They also have milk chocolate versions of their truffles. I can't break it apart. I'm going to have to bite it. Oh, it's amazing. It's perfect, isn't it? It's so mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you honestly can't go wrong in here, I think, is really the point go in everything is beautiful everything looks amazing it smells mm -hmm. crazy when you walk inside yeah. you like walk in like just hit with the smell of chocolate um and so anything you see in there is going to be delicious it's going to be handmade it's, it's going to be absolutely fantastic also they deliver all over the country they do yeah so you can order once you go home and you're like oh that chocolate place in We're new york so city they actually make most of their money on deliveries around holidays well, so that's a really nice gift for somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. My mom's birthday is next week. I feel like I should go back in and get her some mm -hmm. chocolate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that's if you are really a chocolate good. lover, which I think most people are, you definitely have to try this place while you're here. Mm -hmm. We're still on desserts. We're on back on Bleecker Street. 
Um, we are at Rocco's right now. Um, so Rocco's is an Italian pastry shop. They have a lot of really delicious things in there, but mm -hmm. this is home to the best cannoli in New York City. And I know that's a really bold claim yeah. <laughs> because there are a lot of fantastic places to get a cannoli in New York City. Yeah. This really is the best one, though. You can say I've done like extensive research. <laughs> so, so why Catherine says this? Because there are a lot of great cannoli places. Yes, absolutely. They make them right in front of you. So these shells are empty. You pick out. You can get a chocolate shell. You can get a plain shell. Um, these are actually minis. They have yes. regular sized cannolis. We are just we're getting really full. We have actually today. been eating everything you've been yes. seeing. Um, so these are plain mini shells. You can get. Um, in the minis, you can get chocolate dip as well. Same in the large size, plain yeah. and chocolate. Um, then they fresh fill the cannoli cream. It is absolutely fantastic. And for anybody that is gluten-free out there, because I've, I've done this for guests uh, on tours before, they will actually sell you a, a to-go espresso cup just with cannoli cream. So oh, that you know, sounds good too. It's the greatest thing in the that world, and too. I'm not gluten free, but I have gotten myself one. Um, yeah. They'll also do the ends. They'll ask you if you want pistachios, crushed pistachios, or chocolate chips. So Lori chip. got chocolate chip. I got crushed pistachio. You can't go wrong either way. If you're not sure. I have asked them to do one, one of side of each and they will do that too. <laughs> now, one other thing to know about Rocco's is they use the traditional Italian pricing. So if you eat in, the cost of this cannoli to eat in the restaurant is different than the cost of the cannoli to take it to go. We took it to go. So it'll be less expensive to go. You're paying for the service inside the price when you eat inside but it is it's really nice inside and so if you are yeah. looking for a place to go like sit and have a coffee and have a pastry like it, yeah. it's a really nice spot to do that so can't go wrong either way all right i think it's about time oh god i'm gonna make a mess um <laughs> yep yep now <laughs> While she's eating, I'll explain what's going on in her mouth. Um, because they just because they just filled the the shell. The shell is crunchy, mm -hmm. right? A lot of places will fill the shell in the morning, or you know, whenever they run out, they fill sure. them in it and they put them in the refrigerated display. Uh, but they sit there until they're sold. So the shell actually starts to get soggy over time, mm -hmm. and that's not possible because these were. These were empty shells up until about three it's, minutes it's ago. It's like a crazy texture combination because yeah. you have this amazing filling mm -hmm. um, and it's super, super smooth and um, the shell is really, really crunchy. Yeah. So it kind of makes a mess when you eat it yeah. <laughs> in a way that if one's been sitting there all day in a pastry case, it maybe wouldn't be quite so messy because it's all yeah. kind of melded yeah. together, but worth it. So this is one that you would eat on, you want to eat right now because this needs to be refrigerated if you don't. But they have cookies, they have other they have pastries that could here. you could take Everything to go here with you to the hotel. Yeah. Um, really, really nice cookies and other pastries. Yeah. Um, they actually, right behind us in the case right there, they have these absolutely giant cookies. I've had one for dinner before. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like sweets. <laughs> so we're gonna enjoy our cannoli. So we are at our last stop. Three desserts is the right number of desserts. Uh, <laughs> or is, more. <laughs> this want. is Molly's Cupcakes. It started in Chicago. It was on the television show Cupcake Wars. Yes. And it is in our neighborhood. The best. They are amazing. Um, honestly, sometimes I have people on the tour, we get to the end, they're like, oh, I don't know, I'm not really a big cupcake person. I'm like, mm, yeah. you really have to try these. These are pretty special cupcakes. Um, when you go in, you can customize your own list of cake flavors, frosting flavors, different toppings, um, but they have some in the case already that have already been put together, and those are filled on the inside. Those are my favorites. I love, yeah. I love filled cupcakes. So I got, this one is a pistachio rose. Um, this one is chocolate raspberry, so the inside filling is going to be a raspberry jam. And this one is a peach cobbler. I think that's the one they won cupcake wars with, was peach the peach cobbler. cobbler. I think really? that's the one, yeah. All right. Um, my other favorite to get here is the chocolate sea salt caramel. I don't know if you're noticing a theme. I really like anything that involves salty caramel and chocolate. But um, And if you're gluten-free, they have a flourless chocolate. Dude, that's so good. It is, it is very, very yes. rich. Yes. <laughs> it's very good. 
Um, and they also have vegan cupcakes. They do. Within the Build Your Own, they have a vegan Yeah, option. you can get vegan, vegan cupcakes, vegan buttercream. Um, I'm not vegan, but I have had them, and they are absolutely delicious. So this is a good spot for vegans. Yeah, and as you can see, we're taking these to go because we have eaten enough on this tour today. But this is one of those stops that you can just grab the yeah. cupcake and take it back to your hotel and eat it But it's later. really cute on the inside as well. If yeah. you're ever looking for a really nice place to go sit and like relax, have a coffee for a little bit, it's pretty fun on the inside. They have chairs that look like playground swings that you can sit in. Mm -hmm. And they actually have board games and books and things like that. So if you really do want just like a fun, kind of like quirky place to sit, yeah. um, it's all a school theme. Um, yeah. Molly was the owner's uh, second or third grade teacher. Third grade, I think. Yeah, and for everybody's birthday, she made yeah. cupcakes, so they named the store after her in, in honor of her. And so the inside is all school themed. Yeah, and the front of it is actually painted to look like a yellow school bus. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's very eye-catching when you walk by. If you're in this part of the neighborhood, you will not miss this. Yeah. Um, so definitely stop in and grab a cupcake. actually here on McDougal Street at Cafe Reggio. Uh, one of the things I get asked a lot by people if they're in this area is where's a good place to go sit and have a coffee. Yeah. Uh, if you just need to get off your feet for a little bit, and, relax. And Greenwich uh, Village has a lot of great coffee places. Yeah. Cafe Reggio is just one of our favorites. It has been here forever. Since 1927. <laughs> 1927. <laughs> and they brought over the first cappuccino machine, at least to New York. The machine is on display inside, yeah. first cappuccino machine. This was a very Italian neighborhood, so it made yeah. sense to invest in, in, in it. Um, so I got myself an iced coffee black because I like it. I like sure, it black can't yet. go wrong. Yeah. Uh, New Yorkers love iced coffee. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they are known for being the first cappuccino in New York, so if you do want to get yeah. like the thing they're known for, definitely go sit and have a cappuccino. And for me, this is a place to go if you do want to like sit and have table service and, and kind of right. just have a leisurely yeah. experience. If you're looking for a grab and go, there's tons of other places in the neighborhood that you could go grab a quick coffee. And there's a lot of history here with yeah. the beatniks that hung out here as well and, and the intellectuals and the, yeah. This has been a very popular place. Also inside the art itself. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's because they've got a very large collection of older yeah. pieces that are worth a lot of money. So. Yeah, so even if you just want to go in and take a quick look to see what there is to see, see the old uh, machine and see some of the artwork, it's definitely worth it. <laughs> All right. Can't believe I'm going to say this. There is actually more to life than food. So make sure you check out some of our other tour, walking tour content. Remember to click sub subscribe and click the notification bell so that you'll get that notification when we have a new video coming out. And these are absolutely free to watch. But if you are so inclined, you are more than welcome to leave a tip for your tour guides. We're going to include links for some payment information right there uh, at the end of the video. So thank you so much and we'll see you next time.